Yeah, we'll uh, go through the demo. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. All right, great. So we'll click on start demo. And it has started to recognize my face. So it basically takes my first image as the base and then it will check whether my subsequent uh, images are matching my first image. Uh, so as long as they match, it will show face match confirmed. And uh, if say someone else comes in the view who is not me, then uh, it will detect that person's face and it will show that uh, it's a different person in view. Uh, and uh, if uh, I'm not there in the view, if I go uh, get up from the seat and go somewhere else, then it will detect and it will highlight that as well. So. And uh, if someone else comes in the view. So. So if another person enters the view, then uh, it will show that another person has entered the view. So it will show unknown person detected. And if uh, I bring up my cell phone while I'm uh, writing the exam, so it will detect that as well. And if the book comes in the view, so it will detect uh, the book as well. Uh, right now it's not detecting, so we'll have to work on the detection algorithm. So this is basically uh, how it works and at the same time you can see this uh, voice activity thing. So if I'm speaking uh, or if someone else is speaking in the background, uh, then this will flare up. So there is a continuous face match. Cool, uh, Abhishek, there yeah, is a continuous face match uh, which is showing at the bottom uh, in green color. So that is a uh, yes. process. Pardon? So uh, there is a continuous face match which is shown in yes. the uh, window. Yes. yes. OK, OK. So if I uh, get up and someone else comes and sits in my place, then it will show a different person in view. So continuously we are tracking if the same person is sitting there or not. OK, uh, so basically uh, what all tasks or techniques we are using in this uh, current version. Uh, primarily we are doing three things. We are detecting objects. Uh, we are checking if there is some voice. And uh, third one is uh, we are checking if the face is correct. So we are doing facial recognition. And just to give you like a broad, uh, just high level what all is happening and how uh, it helps us to do this, that too on a browser. So our uh, object detection model is based on mobile net plus uh, SSD. So mobile net is uh, something created by Google and they have made it in such a way that uh, it basically acts as a feature extractor. It is very small in size, so it can work on mobile phones uh, or even browser uh, for that matter. If your uh, CPU performance is not that great, uh, it's also fast. And SSD is a type of uh, detection technique. So normally how uh, this thing uh, works is uh, as you can see in this image. So this green bounding box, uh, it will scan through the entire image. And uh, once it finds the object, it will say, OK, in this particular bounding box, there is an object. 
so instead of going through all these possible combinations a uh, single shot detector just does it uh, kind of in one shot so these two things basically help us uh, get uh, to do this very fast uh, next comes voice detection so any input voice has some frequencies in it and human voice has some particular characteristics so human speech is generally between starts around 200 hertz and goes till around 4000 hertz so if we uh, what we do is we take uh, the audio signal uh, convert it into frequency we find what all frequencies are there uh, and in that we want to see how uh, what all frequencies are there uh, which are in the speech spectrum so between 200 hertz and 4000 hertz what all uh, frequencies are there and if that magnitude is greater than a particular threshold, we will uh, flag that, OK, some voice activity is going on. And lastly, we do facial recognition, which basically works in the following way. An input image goes through a detection phase. Once the face is detected, we sort of align it properly. We crop it and then uh, there's a neural network which does the classification part for us. And how that works is basically since image has so many pixels, uh, we can't compare each and every pixel when we want to compare faces. So we convert it into a smaller 128 dimensional vector. So every face basically gets converted into a set of 128 points. So uh, if someone else's face comes in the view, that will get converted into 128 points. And then uh, facial recognition just becomes a matter of comparing those 128 points. And since that is a small number, that can be easily done on the browser. So primarily, these are the things that we are doing right now. So uh, do you guys have any question? I'll check. I have a question. Yeah. So question is a lot of time it happens. So assume that uh, the exam is for so anything exam happening above fifth grade or sixth grade that is fine. The students are our kids are well educated they understand uh, yes. but if if the exam is online exam is happening for third grade fourth grade or something like that and parents are just helping on the beginner you know uh, setting to start the exam so and there are multiple faces in the beginning so what it will will it pick will it pick the you said that first image or first face will be captured and monitored so if in case, or accidentally also, if there are two faces in the screen when the uh, application starts, so how it will identify which is the right face? Uh, so we can uh, modify our code accordingly. So even if uh, we want to allow multiple people to come and uh, sit for the exam, uh, or if we want there to be multiple people in the view, we just have to modify our code accordingly where we will allow uh, like we will match the faces such that uh, only those two people are there and uh, beyond that nobody else is there. They're not looking at two people. I'm saying, uh, mm -hmm. okay, I'll leave my question. My question is, you said that the first face, the, uh, the first face it will pick and keep monitoring, it, correct? Yeah, so even that part. So uh, instead of uh, first face, uh, since this is a demo, what we do is we just take the first phase. Uh, but in our actual application, how it will be is uh, we will ask the user before starting the exam to click his picture using okay. the webcam. Okay. So then, even so that can be adapted to multiple people. So we'll ask uh, even the parents to get their pictures clicked. Yeah, I understand. Only user will require the only parents will not require. And my worry was that only. So accidentally, there are two faces in the uh, camera, then there should not be. Thanks. Yeah. Or we can just, uh, you know, uh, 
for some particular cases we can just relax our rules. So we know OK uh, for a child there'll be parents with them, so we will not go very. We will just check OK is the child there continuously in the picture. That's fine. Uh, any other question guys? So uh, how will the gesture control be combined with this? Now it is only the person protection and uh, face recognition happening here and also with the voice. Yeah, so we plan to add uh, eye gaze tracking on this. And what that will help us is uh, it will help us check if a person is not reading from uh, any book or any uh, material which is beyond uh, the screen. So like it could happen like your book or mobile phone are not in the view of the webcam. And that is be not being detected by us. So to prevent that, the way would forward would be to check how the eye pattern is happening. And if we find that a person is uh, continuously focusing on and trying to read from somewhere else, uh, we will start flagging that. OK, and uh, what's the accuracy level with this current system now and what's the kind of data you want to train into uh, you know, the best accurate uh, detection? Uh, so uh, face match is pretty accurate. It has uh, on the data set that it was trained on, it has around 99% accuracy. And for practical purposes, it works okay. well enough. Uh, object detection is not that great. Uh, so, but again, like object detection can easily be fooled as well by just not if it's not in the field of view. So that's why you bring in the gesture part. Yeah, so gesture part uh, will be the key. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, just maybe, you know, since there are a lot of designers in the room on the house, like, you know, you can uh, just say what other applications which uh, we can think of. Uh, in both the uh, cases, both in gesture as well as uh, person detection. And uh, uh, when we start thinking for doing designs for uh, uh, products, we might as well uh, use the same technology. So knowing that, okay, we have this, uh, you know, uh, at our disposal at office, as in uh, Palpix, uh, maybe we can think of integrating it in our uh, designs. So maybe you can show some light on that. Yeah, so these uh, underlying techniques can be used in a lot of different places. Uh, like one example of facial recognition is what Google and Facebook use to correctly tag you in your photos. So if say tomorrow we are building some sort of uh, application which involves photos of people, we can keep this in mind that we have this sort of functionality available with us. And similarly, uh, object detection can be used in different places. Uh, uh, maybe even for voice, we can find some application which is beyond this uh, this particular case. Uh, so yeah, uh, think of it like uh, whatever a human can do, right? Uh, in terms of perception, those kind of tasks. Uh, Basically, we are uh, whatever simple tasks humans can do can be automated. So seeing objects, classifying them, detecting them, uh, all those things can be done. So if you're working on something and that particular field has uh, humans or anyone doing some sort of uh, menial job, then that could be given to an algorithm which can do it. Mm -hmm. 
that's uh, that's how i would uh, think about it like uh, what is happening in the current workflow and can that be done by a computer hello in this case that workflow turned out to be a teacher who is monitoring the students and so we thought why not okay let uh, let the webcam do it for you uh, abhishek i have a doubt yeah sir yeah basically uh, here it's detecting the person based like person as a uh, object as a person uh, if it has the features of a human right so if we place a cardboard cut out of a with the human face and everything will it also detect that yeah so okay. because, while i was giving the, the demo i was uh, using a picture from my phone so okay. that was getting detected as a person hmm. because uh, the camera laptop cameras don't have uh, depth per perception that's why right yeah uh, but even that uh, can be trained so basically our model has not been trained to distinguish between uh, what the webcam is showing and uh, like if it's a normal picture or if i'm just putting a cardboard cut out or an image or anything like that mm -hmm. i think i think there should be like uh... it should be this uh, like the gesture pose detection should be something like that there should be minimal minimal movement of the body right like some uh, uh, as in like uh, if the ob uh, the person that is detected is somewhat moving then it's a person if it's not moving at, at all then it's fake right? uh yeah that can be used as a way to identify so uh, just share a trick where uh, uh, like how to fool this like if you really want to uh, do like stand still or use a decoy or whatever else, you know how to fool this like you should you know tell the secret as well yes yeah, so i uh, think we should i think we should make a separate service for fooling this our own algorithm <laughs> that would be a hit <laughs> more yeah. than this product <laughs> yeah Yeah, so if i just give this my own picture it will uh, detect as uh, me so now it has captured my face and if i just try to give a picture of me it is still showing face match confirmed so and to add add to that uh, there is one currently there is one trending thing called the uh, having creating the adversarial examples to uh, trick the machine so i'll just uh, share the screen and show you one example sure so uh, you can see my uh, screen Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So it's like the this is a image of a panda and some noise has been added. So it for a human it's a, the result is exactly looking like a plant, panda but for the machine uh, it's different like it's uh, detecting as a gibbon. So it's like the uh, we exactly don't know the uh, the uh, uh, this deep neural networks what all features they are capturing while we uh, train on a data set. so maybe uh, it's taking some features from fine grain features instead in, uh, instead of a, a counter or a uh, objects uh, shape so if you add the noise it's uh, the, even the the result is uh, getting i mean the result is uh, uh, way different from the expected one the first detection is showing 57% confidence panda 
Uh, yeah, like the it's based on the that's uh, that uh, model's current uh, training. Maybe uh, uh, you know, like the in training phase, what happens is you will have lot of uh, different images, like n number of say thousands of panda images, and tagged with panda name. And this will be another image which which is not in that particular set. So it, it's a, a test image. So on, on test image, you get a say uh, on that model, you get a 57.7 uh, percentage confidence here. That's the case here. And you added a, some noise with a weight and uh, created an image. But for the humans, uh, those two images are somewhat similar, almost similar. And but the formation, there is a, a big difference. Like the here, the it saying the panda, and here it's saying uh, gibbon with 99 percentage uh, confidence. Maybe even the poster matter here, like uh, this particular image gives more of a gibbon feel uh, than some other image. So a smaller noise would also make it uh, look different for a machine. So the noise is the noise generated or added is dependent on the model. Uh, it's like uh, the current uh, one research area is like the how do you explain the, uh, how the this particular train model is working, which is called the uh, research into the explainable AI. So uh, this deep neural networks are structured in such a way that it has some millions of parameters, like the millions of numbers which can be changed based on uh, the training inputs. So this will be adjusted in such a way, and so the some function is implemented in this black box, this uh, deep neural network model. So that this uh, image and the uh, name tag is uh, interconnected. Like the, when you put the image, you get this name tag. But the thing is, uh, you in order to go into the this neural network structure and see like why it detects why it detects this particular image uh, or why it, why it uh, connects this particular image to a particular tag. So it's a very difficult task, like you need to visualize and see what all things are uh, getting uh, figured out in each of the layers of this neural network and so on. So it's a very uh, tricky thing to do. And so uh, we don't know like the say uh, if you add a noise why it's uh, changing the whole output maybe one explain explanation would be like that uh, the neural network itself detected fine grain details like the uh, texture of the image instead of the uh, higher level uh, details like the contour or the uh, shape of the object itself so if you change the texture using some noise it's completely changing the uh, image for the machine. But the, for the humans, humans are detecting the contours or the shapes or uh, shapes of the uh, that objects and all. Abhishek, anything else to add? I think if it is fine, then. Yeah, uh, just I want to thank everyone for uh, joining this. Good turnout today. And uh, uh, I hope there will be a, a, a follow-up session on this itself when we do the gesture also. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Awesome, and uh, maybe uh, we can try doing a couple of other uh, smaller uh, demonstrations as well as a proof of concept which will help us uh, in the business side uh, for sales and other activities. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you so much. It was a good session. Cool. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks all. Bye bye.